Advancing the rights of gay people has been difficult in many countries, but in Uganda where homosexuality is illegal, the LGBT community faces an even greater challenge to having their rights recognized. Filmmakers Catherine Fairfax Wright and Malika Zuwali Waral provide insight into this struggle in the documentary Call Me Kuchu. Focusing on the life of slain gay rights activist David Cato, the film provides a glimpse into the movement for gay rights in Uganda while exposing the human rights violations that the LGBT community has been subjected to. Catherine and Malika, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Well, let me begin by asking you what you hope people will walk away with after watching the documentary. Sure, well, I guess, um, from the from the moment we started making this film, our, our, our focus was to uh, really show the experience of the um, lesbian and gay activist community in Uganda. And uh, we realized, um, well, being filmmakers, but also in terms of the types of films we admired, uh, we realized that probably the best way to create that empathy was to tell as human a story as possible and really um, go deep into the lives of um, our main characters and really focus on um, helping portray them as not just LGBT or African or black, um, but as or Ugandan, but as you know, people who anyone could empathize with. And I think that was really important to us from the beginning of making the film. What is life like for a person that is gay living in Uganda? Um, I mean, I think it changes day to day depending on you know who's around and what the climate, the political climate is like, what has been published recently in the papers, things like that. Um, you know, so it's really the whole spectrum from very normal, and they're just regular um, members of Ugandan society going to church and uh, you know hanging out with their families and working and stuff, and and then other times they're being thrown out of their homes and they're being kicked out of their jobs and. Um, you know, having stones thrown at them in the streets um, after they're recognized, you know, in the wake of a, the publication of, a, of their paper, of their mm -hmm. faces in the paper or something like that. Um, you know, and then it stretches all the way to, um, you know, what happened with our main character, David Cato, who was um, quite brutally murdered, um, most likely on account of, you know, at least to some degree because of his sexual orientation and his activism. Um, so it really, it's really depends on, on the day and the circumstances. What do you think the biggest obstacle that the LGBT community faces in trying to advance their rights in Uganda? Uh, I mean, I think the church has played a, a big role in um, encouraging the kind of uh, homophobic legislation that we, um, or proposed legislation that we followed in the film. And um, as a result, kind of the the larger atmosphere of homophobia in Uganda. Um, so, I mean, one thing that we found really interesting was just to um, to uh, be kind of interacting with the main players in this story, which was a combination of LGBT activists, um, but also um, people who were pushing for the anti-homosexuality bill, which proposed a death penalty for gay people. Um, and they were a combination of politicians and religious leaders. But ultimately, what was fascinating was that Pretty much everyone we uh, we filmed with were pretty religious people. So the LGBT community were almost pretty much as religious and as Christian for the most part as the people pushing for their persecution, um, basically. So it was really um, interesting and kind of tragic to see that while on the one hand um, the Christianity was a source of um, of uh, kind of um, it, Christianity was something that encouraged the LGBT community and um, kind of gave them a faith in human beings in general. On the other hand, it was also something that was inspiring the persecution against them. And what do you think led to the introduction of the anti-homosexuality bill? Like, what was the environment like that led to it? Um, yeah, I mean, to a large extent, it's, it's a pretty similar answer. I mean, a lot of it is just coming from the church, I think. Um, you know, there's some um, pretty clear lines being drawn back to American evangelicals who have spent um, time in Uganda over the last few years. Um, you know, some people say that they, they feel that they've lost the battle um, against LGBT rights in the U.S., so they're trying to nip it in the bud abroad. And um, for various reasons, Uganda is a good candidate for that because it's, uh, it's an English-speaking country. It's a highly Christian 
uh, country, it's also pretty well developed and has a pretty strong infrastructure and you know things like newspapers get out to people. Um, so you know for all these various reasons, it's it's really susceptible to um, the the word of these pastors and and the word coming from them right now happens to be um, you know very much one against the LGBT community and that's a very powerful mechanism. And what is the LGBT community trying to do to prevent the bill from passing? Uh, well, I mean, in our filming, we kind of followed them through um, a lot of the, the, the steps in their, in their work to um, protest it. So um, David, who's the main character in our film, but who was actually killed, as Katie mentioned, one year into our filming, uh, we followed him as he, um, you know, as he went on TV, to on, on local TV news to um, protest the bill and talk about exactly why it was uh, completely unjust, inhuman, um, piece of legislation um, and we also followed him as he uh, tried to work with the international community uh, with uh, f uh, donor country embassies like the US and European countries as well as um, United Nations agencies such as the of office office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights um, and and then we also followed him as he um, took uh, took uh, uh, legal action against a tabloid newspaper in Uganda called Rolling Stone, which has no relation to the Rolling Stone in the US. Um, but that newspaper had been outing members of the LGBT community and in some ways contributing to the fervor that uh, could have led to the anti-homosexuality bill being passed. Um, and David and a couple of other activists actually decided to stop that from happening by taking this newspaper to court in Uganda. And how has the gay rights movement been Im impacted by David's death? Um, well, I think immediately after the, you know, in the wake of his death, there was um, a certain sense of increased tension. Um, you know, the ultimate threat had kind of finally been realized, and um, a lot of members of the community had shown up at the burial, and they had all worn matching T-shirts, um, you know, bearing the the photo of of David and his name, and their uh, you know call to to action kind of in the, that they've been using, um, which is Aluta Continua. And um, so because of that, a lot of their family members and um, employers and things had seen them on TV and um, you know, certain repercussions had come because of the, the, their action and um, their identification with the LGBT community. Um, you know, but then on the flip side, and simultaneous to that increased tension, there was also a strong sense of um, the community being galvanized by his death. and wanting to you know, push the movement all the further and realizing all the more um, what was at stake and um, you know, how, how strongly the need was to just keep um, pushing forward with the movement and getting their rights realized. So the anti-homosexuality bill has been tabled now in Parliament. Is there any update on its status? Uh, I mean, as far as we know, it's still pending. So I mean, there was a time when it essentially been beaten, um, but uh, now that it's been reintroduced, um, as far as we can tell, it could be passed or voted on at any point, really, um, kind of depending on the whim of uh, members of parliament and the priorities of members of parliament. And as filmmakers working in Uganda on such a sensitive issue, did you have any difficulties in trying to put the do documentary together? Um, actually, uh, probably less than you, than you might imagine, because mm -hmm. Um, well, for one, Uganda has a pretty strong sense of freedom of the press. So um, as much as you have people like Giles, uh, you know, publishing the kind of articles that he writes, um, you know, which is viciously outing members of the gay community and advocating essentially uh, for their death, you also have people writing more moderate pieces, um, you know, a little bit more middle of the road talking about both issues, and then you also, or both sides of the issue, and then you also have um, the occasional opinion piece written by a member of the community and things like that. Um, you know, and there's also some sense of um, immunity, I think, for international journalists. They're, uh, you know, accustomed to the presence of foreign journalists, uh, and, you know, and allow them a certain sense of uh, um, distance and autonomy in, in making uh, the pieces that they want to make. And I think another thing was that we weren't really trying to uh, disclose anything that people were trying to keep uh, hidden. It wasn't as if we were making a film about corruption or something. We were making a film about um, you know an issue that has two very dis distinct sides, and each side really believes strongly, um, you know, in in their opinion and, and their 
confident about it and, and happy to have it documented. So um, the occasion was really quite rare that anyone asked us to stop filming or um, expressed any uh, you know, dissatisfaction with our presence. So was it easy to get people in the, in the LGBT community to speak out openly, knowing that they could be persecuted for their beliefs? Uh, well, in some ways, uh, um, uh, for our main characters at least, uh, what ended up happening was it almost became a prerequisite that they'd either already outed themselves or been outed, um, just because obviously that was the only situation in which people could really um, share their lives with us. Um, so that was true for er all our main characters, and David, um, he'd more or less outed himself from the moment he started working as an activist, uh, which was about eight or nine years ago now. Um, and uh, and then other other main characters, they had actually been outed in the newspaper or on TV. And they'd actually just re reached a point where they saw the film as a means not only to talk about um, their struggle in general, but also to have a chance to talk about their own uh, personal stories um, as opposed to the kind of depraved sex life stories that were being published in the newspaper. Um, that said, there were, there were times when we'd film uh, community events um, that would include people who maybe weren't completely out in Uganda and in those situations we'd often just have to try and speak to everyone there about um, how comfortable they were being on camera and we'd try and talk them through what it meant being on camera which was essentially that it could be broadcast at least or it could be become available online at least at any point in which case people in Uganda could see it. Um, so that was definitely a process we had to be very sensitive about and there were some people who just said no, please don't film me and we had to obviously respect that. And what inspired each of you to get involved in this topic and, and make a documentary about it? Um, well I think the there are various reasons. One is just we were interested in the more general topic of LGBT rights in the global south and how they were playing out in areas where it might be about more fundamental issues, um, you know, of the kind of the right to exist uh, rather than just marriage equality, which is also a very legitimate, um, you know, movement. But it's it's just not what's happening so much in many parts of the world. Um, and we were particularly intrigued by Uganda because it seemed that all these different things were happening. Um, you know, these kind of seemingly contrasting things were happening simultaneous to one another. One being um, a, a man named Victor Mukasa, a transgender man who had taken the Attorney General to court and the high courts in, in Uganda for invasion of his privacy um, after a, a police raid. And he ended up winning his case. So it was this kind of landmark victory for a member of the LGBT community. Um, and then, you know, that's amidst a, a climate where you have uh, sodomy laws on the book, punishable with life. Uh, sentence, um, life prison sentence, and, um, and then in addition to that, only a few months later, you had the anti-homosexuality bill tabled in Parliament. So um, it just seemed really fascinating that all of those things could be happening uh, concurrently. And um, so we just decided, you know, and then in addition to that, you you were hearing, starting to hear more and more of the voice of the community um, and their activism, and um, getting a sense of there being some set, like an LGBT community, which you know, an LGBT activist community that we, uh, you know, weren't so aware of prior to that. So we just, uh, you know, thought we should go investigate, see what was, see what was at play and document it. All right, Malika and Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. It's thank a you. pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV Special Broadcast. I'm Monika Fiddler. Have a great night.